The time of breaking of bread and drinking of the cup, it's not a time of sorrow. Now, how many times have you been to churches where they say, you know, get ready to take the, the bread and the cup and, you know, let's remember how sinful we are and, you know, remember the death and, the, uh, and, and, and what Jesus did for us. But I don't believe that the breaking of bread is meant to be a sad occasion. It's meant to be a time of gladness. Look at what it says here in Acts 2. It says in um, verse 44, And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread. So there's the break, breaking bread from house to house. Look at this. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. So not only do we, are we, should we glad when we partake of the bread and the cup, but we do it in singleness of heart. There's that unity again. There's the no contention, the no striving, no heresies, no false doctrine. Um, and eating, to, eating the Lord's Supper. Gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So is the breaking of bread, is it meant to be a time of sorrow? Or is it meant to be a time of gladness? I believe it should be a time of gladness. You know, were they sad at the Last Supper? Well, they were because Jesus was saying he was going to leave them, right? They, he, he was going to die that night. I mean, they were sad then, but is that how we ought to remember what Jesus Christ did for us? No, it should be a time where we rejoice, right? Where we, you know, that's why on Easter Sunday, everyone's rejoicing. He is risen. We're praising God for what he did for us, that he died and he shed his blood because it's something to be glad about. It's not something to be sad about. 